friends, it's Sharon Lasky here from My Crafty Greetings, and I have a Scrappy Tales video for you today. This is kind of like the part two of the moped obsession for Scrappy Tales that I have right now. I love this moped. I love the moped couple. I know I've not done as much on them, but I just did a video where uh, the birds from Scrappy Tales rode the mopeds, and uh, I thought they were super cool for masculine cards, and I just wanted to show you how versatile Sabrina's dies are. Now, I'm going to be using some Echo Park paper here. Um, it's masculine camping paper, uh, so it's great for critters, and I also think the scooter works really well for this. Even if you had the couple on the scooter going through here, that would be a lot of fun. And uh, like, I mean, who wouldn't want a scooter when you're camping? Come on. So we're starting off here with um, two pieces of the pattern paper. And I just wanted to show you how well these dies work, even with other dies you may have in your stash. So here's this little raccoon. Oh, actually that's the fox, but the raccoon you're gonna see in a second. So here's this little raccoon that I had in my stash. You may even have this little guy in your stash too. And I just wanna show you how cute he looks on this scooter. And I'm gonna show you more of more animals on scooters, but um, they're gonna be Scrappy Tails animals, but I wanted to let you know these dies are so versatile, they will work with what you have in the stash, in your stash and make using what you have that much easier. So now all I've done is shorten the base of this little moped here and I've got the floorboard lined up with the um, fender that goes over the back tire so it's nice and straight. And you can see now he fits on that moped perfectly and looks absolutely adorable but we can hardly see him here on that busy paper. So we're gonna give him his own spotlight so that there's breathing room for us to see him. Now the shadow outline for the greeting is also gonna help give breathing room. And there's a reason why I picked white so that it's repeating, because there's not pure white in the cardstock itself, but this draws everything together and makes it unified. So I'm situating the little guy here and you can see the gap at the bottom of the circle there by the bike. If we slide it down, you can see it pulls it together more harmoniously. And what we're gonna do is make sure that when our little raccoon is there, that he's not kind of squeezed into the circle. We wanna make sure that he's in kind of a prominent spot in the circle. I also want to line this up so that the circle comes from the back end of the bike to the front end of the bike in a, a, a a harmonious way. So you can see here it comes out the bottom of the seat and comes out the front where the fender is. Now I'm just putting a little line of glue back behind so that I can mark my place where I need to glue this back down again. You can see my marks. And then I'm going to add my glue to the back of the little moped to stick this together so that it holds in place when we go to stick our little raccoon on. And so we can fiddle around a little bit with his layout. I'm gonna put some glue on the back, everything but the very tip of his tail because we're gonna flick that out for an extra little bit of detail. So just a little flick so his tail's sticking up. Now, I wanted to add some black to separate the two busy pattern papers here and also to unify some of the blacks that are already on our composition. So I'm trying to match up here some of the thicknesses that we have in the other black elements. So you can see the one I chose from the tire and then I changed to a thinner one to match a little bit more the happy birthday sentiment. So I've added the one down here and you can see now this is starting to come together. And then if we also give this um, some grounding, I guess is what it's called. If you wanna give this some grounding, adding that thin line underneath is going to give us a place for that little moped and that little raccoon to rest. So once we get that situated on, you can see now the two papers are working harmoniously together. We have uh, unity between the sentiment and the raccoon element. And now I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. And I just thought, you know what? One more little piece of shiny black strip is just gonna help pull this together. So there's our first masculine birthday card and that is going to be with the moped using the colors from the card stock. Okay, and our next card, I've already prepped some of the layers. I know what I'm gonna be putting together and I've got the background here on some really rustic gray paper with a few clouds and just put in a kind of a roadway there. I also have pre-stamped happy birthday sentiment here, but I wanted to show you something. This is the fairy sentiment stamp set and it has a bigger text 
than what comes in the other stamp set there. And I just wanted to show you, this has a lot of value. You may have a multi-sentiment uh, stamp set in your stash, but uh, adding together the two different sets really gives you so many more options, and I'm gonna show you why later on. So I'm adding my ribbon back here, and you can see I can actually use the detail from the back of that paper to get this lined up straight. And I have here a nice green moped, and I also have the corgi from the Garden Stand Animals die set. I'm adding myself a little bit of packing foam to give it a little bit of lift. This gives less lift than uh, foam tape, maybe uh, a third less lift, and it's also a fraction of the weight. So when you use this on your cards, it really, really keeps the cost of shipping them or mailing them down. So here's the garden stand uh, animals die set. And you can see these guys are so great. There's that little corgi there. And uh, yeah, I colored him in with some Copic markers and decided that he would look adorable waiting there with that moped. And uh, I needed something in the corner here. And you can see on my finished photo in a second here, I added a little cupcake with a candle. So he's waiting there with the moped and he's got a treat for his owner. Okay, so here's something else. Did you know that there is ultra white vellum? Did you ever look at your vellum and think it looked dingy on the project that you had done? So the left is the ultra white and the right is a regular uh, Nina um, vellum. So it makes a difference. This has on the left, the natural and on the right, the ultra white. And you can see the natural with these more neutral colors goes much better than the ultra white. That's the natural and is more harmonious. There are times where that white stuff is gonna come in really valuable. Hopefully that's a helpful tidbit of information. I'm trying so hard here to make sure that I give you value when you're watching my videos. And I so appreciate when you use my links. That helps me so much. And here we have the chicken from the barn animals uh, die set. That goat would look adorable here too. And then the bunny from the garden stand. They're both gonna be riding this moped. I just put a thumb mark in that vellum there. So I could see where I needed to line my ruler up to tear this. And I was just using that extra little thing on my desk to make sure I had it evenly spread apart. You don't always have to measure, you can just use things too. So I'm holding this to start the edge and because uh, I want both edges to be ripped and I didn't want to take off too much. And of course, you know, fiddle fuss, Ugh. doesn't always go the way you want. So I'm just folding the end over here and so we can wrap this around. So the torn edge goes very, very nicely with this rustic paper and the idea of chickens and rabbits riding mopeds to birthday celebrations. So I have this beautiful scripty uh, birthday sentiment and here is where um, those extra sentiments that come from the fairy sentiments stamp set are going to be so wonderful. So you can see how nicely that fits on this banner for this birthday die cut. And I've already put sticky on the back of it so that it will stick itself down. Um, and that fits perfectly in that little space there. I'm cutting the ends off. Now I'm folding this in half because I wanna do a very shallow fishtail. Shallow meaning not a deep V cut. You can see here, it's just a shallow one. And although my pen didn't work, I was able to scratch in the mark. So here's a tip when you're cutting. Put your scissors so that the tip sits at the point and then close your scissors towards where you wanna cut. So I'll show you this again. I'm just etching this in now if you have pencil or pen. So here the, I'm lining the scissors up to where I want cut. See, line it up and then close the jaws up towards where you've got it lined up and you're gonna get a perfect uh, fishtail on the end of your banner. So, and I'm gonna be running that up along the top and then I'm just gonna situate this little chicken here and I've got all my pieces together. Now vellum is always going to kind of gape a little bit. I would encourage to glue all your pieces together first before you stick it to the vellum because vellum when it gets uh, regular glue stuck to it can get very wrinkly. And if you have a big panel, you don't want it to get wrinkly. So here's what I do. I put Tombow Mono Multi on my whole shenanigans first, or you can use tape runner, one or the other. 
Let the Tombow Mono Multi dry. It will be very sticky. I promise it will not have a problem attaching itself to the vellum. Once you've got it stuck on, then you can take a glue booger, a glue dot. These are my glue boogers. You can slide them underneath of what you have attached and push everything down and it will hold it all together very, very nicely. And no wrinkles. You can also see that I put a grounding stripe of black there just to give a place for that all to sit. If you've made it this far and you're not a subscriber, do definitely subscribe because I promise you there's always fun shenanigans going on here. If you don't mind giving me the thumbs up, I sure would appreciate it and it makes my heart happy. And leave me a comment if there's anything that you would like to see more of. Here's the garden stand animals and we're gonna grab this kitty cat here. I have been out of commission for uh, about three weeks now. I'm still suffering the ill effects of the um, measles that I had. <laughs> so I may have superpowers sometime soon though because I'm getting so many zips and zaps in my fingers. I'm sure that's what's going to happen. I'm just bending the kitty paw here so that it looks like it's sitting on the seat a bit better. And it looks very zoomy, doesn't it? <laughs> this is what I do when I'm making cards. I play a bit. Isn't it all about having fun though? Shouldn't we be having fun when we're making cards? And I know sometimes when it's frustrating and things don't work for you, it's, uh, you know, can ruin it a little bit, but stick with it. Here you can see I cut two totally different size pieces to stick on the back of this, but once we layer it, nobody's going to be any the wiser. So I'm made these uh, just to add a little bit of detail also to give it a little bit of movement because the pattern paper itself has movement and I picked up this deep teal with this orange I think it just looks delicious together and um, I'm going to back this so that it really gives a poignant and punchy look maybe I should have added a few balloons behind the back of the cat and <laughs> maybe I will add them later on. Okay, here's what I wanna show you from earlier on where I was telling you it's good to have multiple sentiment sets. This birthday sentiment is from the fairy sentiment set from Scrappy Tales, and you can see it's a much bigger text than the birthday that came with that happy. So besides getting a lot of awesome extra words, you're going to get different size texts, and those different size texts can do so much for your projects. You can see easily I got to cut straight run just underneath that birthday, saved me having to fussy cut around all the P tails and the Y tails. And I'm just gonna do like a little bit of a bubble cut or fussy cut up around the top here. I don't have to do anything too serious, but uh, this will make for an easier job getting my sentiment cut out. And the other thing that I like too is that when it is straight across at the bottom of a scripty sentiment, it actually makes your eye follow your composition a lot better. Just makes for so many more options. So I'm gonna add some foam to the back of this piece here and I love my packing foam because it's see-through so I know exactly where to cut. I've run some ATG on the back and then you can also use felt and foam glue. Maybe you have this in your stash. Do you know it is almost exactly the same as Tombow Mono Multi? So if that is cheaper for you in your area, go for that. Now mine's a little on the thick side because it is old <laughs> and it's old glue. I'm putting my sentiment at the top and adding some ATG to the back. Thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget to support Scrappy Tales. It lets Sabrina know that I'm working hard uh, to be a team member there at Scrappy Tales. It also helps me bring good content to you, or at least hopefully it's good content. Again, all the Scrappy Tales links will be below. Here are some more videos to watch, and I'll also include the link below for assembling the mopeds and the birds. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye.